The case of acumen and embrace is one of my favorites to read because it shows a perspective from both sides of the social investment table. That of potential investor, acumen fund, which now is just called acumen, and the potential investee, embrace. So here's a quick overview of acumen. It was founded in 2001 by Jacqueline Novogratz, and it aims to alleviate poverty through market-based approaches. Jacqueline had a vision to fill in the gap between venture capital and venture philanthropy. She coined a term, patient capital, and took donor dollars and invested them for return, the way you would investment capital. Patient capital blends social and financial returns for long-term impact. In particular, here are some qualities of patient capital. Long time horizons for the investment, a relatively high tolerance for risk, a goal of maximizing social rather than just financial returns, providing management support and business acumen to help pioneering new business models succeed, the flexibility to seek partnerships and subsidies from governments and corporations, or to co-invest when it's beneficial to low-income customers. The key question that Acumen faces in this case is whether or not to invest in Embrace, a nonprofit medical device organization that's considering changing its structure from simply a nonprofit to perhaps a hybrid or a for profit structure. Now, whether or not Embrace actually goes through with this will have an effect on Acumen's decision because it will affect their ability to gain a return on their investment. Now, notably, Acumen doesn't distribute any dividends to its investors, but keeps those investments within the organization to reinvest in other worthy ventures. Now, let's look at the other side of the table and quickly summarize Embrace. Embrace was founded by Jane Chen and three other fellow Stanford students in 2007. Their initial product is an extremely low-cost infant warmer developed in the Stanford D School class. This product did very well, but as the team thought about expansion, they were having challenges accessing enough capital to scale quickly. They had originally incorporated as a nonprofit for two main reasons. In their words, first, to adhere to their social mission, and second, to build trust with key constituencies. But now, they needed several million dollars of growth capital and felt that a structure as a for-profit or a hybrid might allow them to access that capital more easily.